Hi there. Thank you for joining me today in our study in the book of John. Today we are in chapter 16. We're going to start from verse 12 and we're going to go down to the end of verse 15. We are going to continue talking here about the Holy Spirit or the Comforter or the Advocate that Jesus has given giving us and the purpose he has given the Holy Spirit to us. And it's amazing that the job the Holy Spirit has when he comes into us um, and how he will help us understand the Word of God. So I'm looking forward to sharing this message with you. I believe it will be a great blessing. Once again, thank you for joining me in our study in the book of John. As I mentioned, we are in chapter 16, verse 12 today. If you were with us in the last session, we were talking about the Holy Spirit. Jesus said he was going to send a comforter. He was telling the disciples um, that it would be better for them if he went away, because if he went away, then he would send the comforter to them or the advocate, depending on what version you're reading from. We learned last time that Jesus was speaking to him about this uh, comforter or this advocate that was going to come and he's going to talk to the world about sin and about righteousness and about judgment. And we learned about those things last time. If you missed the last session, it would really be worth your while going back and having a look at that one. We only did about three or four verses, but it's a very powerful word, a very powerful message and something for us to learn. So he's continuing on. Jesus is continuing on from that and he's speaking uh, more about the Holy Spirit. In verse 12, he says, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit, right? When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. So he's saying that, that there's a lot of things that I need to tell you about. There's a lot of things that you don't understand yet, but you're not ready to hear them. You're not ready to understand what they're about. Remember, they have not received the Holy Spirit at this time. In John 14, I can't remember which verse. We'll just put a notation at the bottom. Um, it says that they have the Holy Spirit around them, but soon they will have him in them. Because Jesus has not gone to the cross yet, because he has not died, because he has not resurrected, it is not possible for them to have the Holy Spirit in them yet because they had not been forgiven of their sins. Their sins had not been taken away. And you can't be an imperfect vessel and have the Holy Spirit in you. So they did not have the Holy Spirit in them yet. So they were not ready to hear some of the things that Jesus had to say, because even though the Holy Spirit was around them, he was not in them interacting with their spirit and revealing and giving revelation of truth to them. So the truth that they were receiving were, were right from the lips of Jesus. So he says, um, I have much more to say that you cannot bear, but when that spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. And he will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. So the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he's going to speak to them about things. He's going to teach him and he's going to be prophetic as well, because that's what it means, right? That's what prophetic means to tell about the future. And so we know that this happened. If you remember the story of Peter, when he, he's a, such a great example, because Peter had so much zealous for the Lord and, and he, he wanted so much to see things moving ahead. He was always looking, you know, how things, how he could speed things up. And when Jesus was ready to ascend into heaven after he had spent 40 days uh, dealing with them after he rose from the grave, and just before he, he was ascending into heaven, he was telling them to go into Jerusalem and to wait for the power from on high. And Peter asked him the question, when are you coming to establish your kingdom? Because Peter still did not understand that this kingdom was a spiritual kingdom, that this was about the kingdom of God, not about an earthly kingdom. So Peter, along with all the others, they were looking for Jesus to come and to take over the throne of David and to kick the Romans out of Israel so that Israel could be a nation again, uh, a sovereign nation where they control their own thing, right? That's what they were looking for. That's what they thought the Messiah was coming to do. 
But they did not understand at that point that the Messiah was coming to set us free of our sins, and that he was coming to establish the kingdom of God, not an earthly kingdom. And so Peter says to him, when are you going to come and establish your kingdom? Now, this was 10 days before the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit came down upon uh, Peter and the other 120 that were up in the upper room, 119, I guess, uh, up in the upper room, um, they received the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, the 11 or the 10 of the disciples had received the Holy Spirit on the night that Jesus rose from the grave, that Sunday morning. And we're going to get into that when we get there. We won't talk about that right now. But they received the power of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And on the day of Pentecost, when the people seen what was happening, and they, these guys were speaking in tongues, they were speaking different languages, and they said, oh, these guys are drunk. And Peter got, got up and said, these guys are not drunk as you suppose, but, but they are filled with the Spirit. And he preached the God, first gospel message, and 3,000 people uh, came to the Lord and were added to the church. Now, Peter went through a radical transformation in that 10 days from when he seen Jesus last until the day of Pentecost. In fact, what you can actually say, it didn't actually take 10 days. It just actually took a moment in time. It was when the Holy Spirit came down upon him that he received the understanding of what Jesus was talking about. All of a sudden, when Peter got up and spoke that message, he spoke it with one with understanding and knowledge. He spoke it as the one that, that had the revelation because now that Holy Spirit was in them, revealing to them and giving revelation to the things that, that Jesus had spoke to them. And the Holy Spirit does the same thing for you and I today. When we read the Word of God, when we get this Word of God into us and we meditate on the Word of God, the Holy Spirit brings revelation to that Word of God. And oftentimes we're looking for a revelation from the, from the Holy Spirit without getting into the Word. But the Holy Spirit never works on his own. And he says that here, that he's going to reveal everything that I have said to you. He's going to tell you about it. He's going to teach you about it. And he's going to tell you about the things that come. And Jesus says that he only speaks the things that I have spoken to him because the Father has given all things to me. Um, let's continue, continue to read here in verse 14. He says, he will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what he is going to make known to you. So what the Holy Spirit makes known to us, he receives from Jesus, right? Jesus has spoken these words and he has given the revelation. And so he has given this revelation to us through the Holy Spirit. So when, when we study the word of God and we spend time meditating on the word of God, then the Holy Spirit can give us revelation of, of what, what it is saying. Now, oftentimes we think, well, you know, I, I'm in the Word of God. You know, I do my 15-minute devotional every morning, and I just, you know, whip through it. Or if you decide to read the Bible through in a year, you quickly read over the things that you've read. And 10 minutes after you finish reading them, if somebody asks you what you read, you can't remember what you read, right? Because in order for the Holy Spirit to give us revelation, we need to meditate on these things of the Lord. We need to spend time uh, looking at them and thinking about them. I do this in a couple of different ways. One way I do it is when I'm reading the Word of God, like I have a reading program that I do uh, every day, every morning, and I try to do it out on my gazebo, and there's nobody else around, so I read it out loud. I read whatever I'm reading, I'm reading out loud, because then I'm getting it into my, my soul in two different ways. I'm hearing it, and I'm seeing it. So more of the word comes in. And then I don't just forget about what I've read or what I've heard. I spend some time thinking about it. I think about the things that are said. I think about, and I ask the Lord, what is the revelation on this? What, what is it that you're trying to say in this? And it's been an amazing thing when you do that, because the Holy Spirit just keeps bringing new revelation and new revelation. You know, there's, there's so much in the Word of God that we can, we can glean out of it when we do this thing and when we meditate on the Lord. Now, <clears throat> let me just clarify a little bit what it means to meditate on the Lord. Because we're not talking about transcendental meditation or yoga or anything like that. Meditation is just simply thinking about something. Now, I think every one of us knows how to worry. 
I think every one of us knows how to, to worry about something when there's a difficulty. So if we're at our job or we're at school or wherever we are, we can worry about something that is bothering us. We can, we can think about it and wonder how it's going to work out in the future and how it's going to all come around. Worrying is just negative meditation. That's all worry is. It's just negative meditation. So if you can spend time thinking about things, the negative things, then you can spend time thinking about the positive things. You can spend time thinking about the Word of God. So as you're working, I love this when I'm working uh, in my shop or where, wherever, I, when I'm doing something that doesn't take a, a lot of concentration, I just take that time and I spend that time meditating on the Word of God, something that I've read that day, something that I've heard that day, or, or else I listen to somebody who, who is speaking and then I, I'm able to meditate on what they're saying while they're, they're speaking. And then, of course, the other thing that I do that really helps is that I, I do it in repetitiveness. I do it over and over because I know that's how I learn. Now, maybe you're not like me. Maybe you learn the first time through. You don't have to do uh, multiple times. But for me, it works when I do uh, multiple times and, and, and I meditate and think about it, read it over, read it over. I mean, we're all like that. How many of us have a favorite verse that we like to quote and then uh, we go look it up and we <laughs> realize that we're quoting maybe two or three verses that we put together into one and we're not really quoting it accurately because we haven't spent the time in the Word. So it's important for us to do that, right? To spend time in the Word and to allow the Holy Spirit to bring that revelation to us. That's his job. That's what he's come here for. We should use him, right? He, he's coming to help us. He's here as a, as a comforter, as an advocate for us. He's here to help us. So when we acknowledge that the Holy Spirit has been given to us for that purpose, when we acknowledge that he is here to help us and to guide us, then, then we can avail ourselves of that awesome opportunity that we have been given by the Lord. Verse 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will receive from me what he, has, what he will make known to you. Everything from God is, is Jesus. And Jesus makes known to us the things that come from the Father. He makes known to us every truth that comes from the Father. Remember, the Father is the one that spoke all things into existence through Jesus, manifested by the Holy Spirit. The, the, all three were involved in creation. All three are involved in, in everything that goes on around about us. And the Holy Spirit's been given to us as an advocate to help us and to teach us as a teacher because we don't have Jesus with us anymore. That's why Jesus says, it is, is better for you if I go and the Holy Spirit will come to you because Jesus could only teach the people that he was with. But the Holy Spirit is in all of us. In, in as many people that have accepted Jesus, the Holy Spirit is in there, and the Holy Spirit can reveal and teach to us the things that Jesus was teaching to his disciples. And that's, that's an amazing thing. If we, if we could take that seriously, and, and we could count ourselves as a student, and say, okay, teacher, what do you want to teach me? You know, if you're a student in university or, or college or something, you're taking a program, uh, that you want to take because you have a certain direction you want to go in your life as far as a career goes. And, and you, you pour yourself into that study. You know, by the time you get into college or university education, the teachers are not going to force you to do your work. They're not going to check to see if you're doing your work or if you're handing in your assignments. They really don't care. <laughs> They're giving you the information and they'll help you if you have trouble. But if you don't do the work, that's up to you. They're, they're not going to force you, right? Because you have to pursue what you want to do. You have to, you have to grab the bull by the horns, as the saying goes, and, and you have to get at it. And it's the same thing here. We have the opportunity. We have a teacher that's been given to us. We have someone who is able to bring revelation to us and who is able to show us what God is intending in his word. But if we don't avail of ourselves, if we don't take hold of it, if we don't say, okay, I'm going to press in and do this, then the Holy Spirit just sits there and waits. He's not going to force you. He is not a taskmaster. He is a comforter. He is not going to force you to do anything, but it's up to you. If you say, okay, I want to do this. I want to press in. I want to learn. I'm going to get into the word of God. 
then you need to pray quickly that the Holy Spirit and get him involved and say, recognize him as a teacher and say, Holy Spirit, I know you are the teacher that God has sent. And as I read, I read the word of God here, I just ask that you would bring revelation, that you would show me the things that uh, you want me to see today. And this is something that I've done. And it's just amazing the revelation that comes out of reading the word of God. So we can spend our time seeing how fast we can read the Word of God or how fast we, how many times in a year we can read through the Bible. And that's fine if that's what you want to do. I mean, I've done that many times. I've read through the Bible many, many times. And I've listened to it even more times all the way through. But it, what's important for us is to get revelation from what we are reading, what we're spending time. I would rather spend, uh, you know, a half an hour on two verses and get a revelation than spend you know, the same amount of time seeing how many verses I can read and five minutes after I'm finished, I don't remember anything that I've read because there's not much value in that, right? Although the Word of God is getting into us that way and once it is into us, then the Holy Spirit can bring it back to our memory and He can use it to bring revelation. But not in the same way as, as if we just spend time thinking about and meditating about it. I jumped into a study here a few months ago on a verse in Matthew, uh, Matthew 5, uh, verse 17. It's uh, in the Beatitudes. And Jesus says, I have not come to abolish the law and the prophets, but I have come to fulfill them. And I, I just, you know, that verse has always intrigued me. For, for many, many years, that verse has intrigued me. And I always thought he was talking about fulfilling the law as he was fulfilling the purpose of the law. The purpose of the law was to bring us into relationship with God, but it didn't work because of our sin. And that's true. You know, a few months ago, I started looking at, you know, there's got to be more to this verse than that. There's got to be, there's got to be something else that, that, that God is talking about here. And so as I started meditating on that verse and God started to open up a whole new realm to me that is just amazing how Jesus fulfilled the law, how he fulfilled every requirement of the law. And when you go through it and you see the things that he did on the few days before his um, death and what he what he accomplished through his death and when he went into the ground and rose again and, you know, that whole 40 days right up to the day of Pentecost, there were so many things that he fulfilled. And as we go through this story, you know, we've talked about already about the, the Palm Sunday, where where that was the requirement in um, the Passover, where they had to bring the lamb into the house, you know, four days before they killed the lamb. And that Palm Sunday was representing Jesus coming into Jerusalem the four days before he, before he would die on the cross. And so there's so many more of these things. We talked about Judas, what his purpose was, and there's going to be many, many more that we are going to talk about as we we get into uh, chapter 18, 19, 20 in there. And it's just amazing when, when you look at these things and you see how God works everything out and how Jesus fulfills everything that is required in the law that he became for us, everything that God intended him to to be. And the Holy Spirit brings that revelation to us when we seek, right? When we seek. The Word tells us that if we seek, we will find. So if we seek and we ask the Holy Spirit to help us, then He gives us revelation. Many times I've had verses where I didn't understand. I didn't understand what was going on. And I just say, Lord, what is going on here? You know, Holy Spirit, show me, show me what's going on. Sometimes He answers very quickly. Sometimes it's a couple of years before He answers. But He always answers at the right time. And then all of a sudden the revelation comes, oh yes, that's what this means. That's what this is talking about. You know, for example, uh, uh, I don't know, about a year ago or something, I was reading the story uh, about the marriage feast where Jesus was and performed the first miracle and he changed the water into wine. And I was reading that story and I, uh, I was just saying, Lord, there's got to be more to this story than that. Just what, changing water into wine, like why is this story in the book, in the Bible? What, what, what is the purpose of this? Like there, there's more to it than just changing the, the water into wine, which is an amazing thing in itself, right? Changing water into wine, that's no small thing. It's an amazing thing. But as I meditated on it and I prayed about it and I, I just asked the Lord what it is, finally the revelation came to me that this whole thing was a comparison between the old covenant and the new covenant. The, the first wine was the old covenant. It was good, 
but it didn't last and it really didn't satisfy. But the new wine was so much better and it was everlasting. There was enough, there was enough for everybody. And it was a comparison between the old covenant and the new covenant. When I seen it, oh, wow, that's amazing, right? So this is what the Holy Spirit does. He brings these revelations to us. So thank you for joining me today as we learned about the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your Holy Spirit that you have given us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have poured down upon us so that we can receive these revelations that he is a teacher and a counselor. I just ask you, Holy Spirit, that for everyone listening, that you would just uh, show us the revelation of your word, of the word of God, that as we read the word, we would get this revelation. And Father, I just ask that you would put a desire in our heart for your word and for revelation of your word. And we know that when we have that desire and we seek after it, that you are faithful, that you have given us the Holy Spirit that will lead us into all truth. And for that, we are truly thankful. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. As I mentioned before, if you haven't seen any of these uh, messages, you can go to our YouTube channel or our um, website and you can avail yourself of all the videos that we've made. So thank you for joining me today. Remember, Jesus loves you and so do I. We'll see you next time. Take us home, girls.